Hello everyone, this is Dungeon Master Boba coming at you with another video. This time we're going to be talking about power gaming and the such. Um, first off, for those of you who don't know what it is, I envy you, you're a very lucky group who don't know anything about it. But it's essentially, um, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the general thing is making your character stats um, ridiculously high, so high that it breaks the game and or not it might not go that high but so high enough that you are essentially better than everyone else in the game and it depending on what game you're in it can really ruin it for a lot of people and um, generally power gaming is associated with people who can't role play so they just spam mathematical equations or and then try to find the best combination of hit points attack armor class and stuff but it can also be done simply by looking through the books for feats merits or flaws depending on whatever games you're playing and then you know min mat min maxing and such which that's essentially you know you have a lot of things you're never going to use be like one or two or something like <clears throat> in world of darkness you might have one or one charisma and like one appearance and then um have like five strength and five stamina as an example of min maxing but um, those are just a couple of ways of power gaming, but I'm not really here to talk about how to power game or anything like that. I'm here to talk about why role playing is better than power gaming. Um, you know, personally as a DM, I really like playing with people who role play their characters better than they power game them. If you make a character um, who is generic, I'm going to be a lot less likely to like your character and I'm going to be a lot less likely to really put as much effort into the game and the story because it's, you know your character won't be fun to DM or GM or whatever and let's say that you have you may, there's a lot of reasons to power a game because you have one of feeling superiority some people do it because they want to break the game <clears throat> um, some people do it because they're scared of their character to die people who do it for superiority or just, um, those kind of people, I guess, just are the kind of people who don't play well with others kind of people, and I mean, they could be talked down and just talked about how nobody, this isn't like a contest and stuff, that might work, or you could kind of, um, tell them that they want to be superior than a superior role player than a superior power gamer, and, um, then they'll, hopefully that'll help some of the mechanical problems with them breaking encounters and <clears throat> stuff but then it would still take the spotlight away from your other players and those players can be some of the trickiest and um, harder ones to deal with the people that want to break your game and they just power game just because they can and they want to prove that they can break the system <clears throat> it's best to not even play with those people at all but if you it's if it comes down to playing with them or playing nothing at all I don't know I might try playing with them for a little bit and then if they refuse to stop acting like that I might try <clears throat> and um, beat them at their own game as a DM and just but that's that I, I might do that if I'm really desperate to play the game or something but most likely I'll just will ignore it and then not play the game I'd rather play nothing than play with somebody like that and the first kind of people also if they keep acting like that, I'll eventually just stop playing. Uh, that is not something that would be fun at all for me, and I'm sure it wouldn't be fun for any of the other players. And then the third type of people, which luckily are probably the easiest to deal with, are people who might, you know, they might be power gaming because they're scared their character's going to die. Um, if you're playing a game that is brutal, um, I can't think of one right off the top of my head, but depending on the game master you might be maybe you have a reputation for being extra brutal or something which if you kill your characters off just to prove you you can as a game master then that's a shame on you and then that's a whole nother subject right there but um with me the only time I ever kill my players um well I've killed them off without well with being a lot less merciful in the past for actually they've died because of my error in the past which that was my own fault but every time I kill them off um, on purpose is because 
they've just done something completely and utterly stupid that they shouldn't have done. Or they have, really, if somebody's power gaming, I'm a lot more likely to kill them off. If somebody's sitting there in their game and they're telling me that they're making the best character they can make mechanically, then I'll be a lot more inclined to kill them than I would somebody who is like you know putting a whole bunch of effort into making a cool and interesting character if i like your character and you're in my games and you do good for the story and the other people in the group like you then it's i'll be less likely to kill you i'll be a little bit easier on you like i mean you can still die i know i'm never going to make anybody immortal in any of my games but if you're valuable to the story and you make the plot better I'll be a lot less likely to um, be brutal with you. Like, uh, a lot of the times I try to help my characters out, try not to kill them. But, I mean, if, even if you are an awesome character and crucial to the story and you still act like a complete idiot and get your spin go in there and charge a great dragon and Dungeons and Dragons when you're like level 5 and you charge a great dragon, I mean, there's no really surviving that. But if, as long as you are. You, you, I won't let people get away with breaking their rules and stuff just because the character is cool, but I will be more inclined to not throwing um, an overpowered enemy in their path if they're a cool character rather than um, if they're a power gamer. Because one way to deal with power gamers as a DM is just straight up kill them off if you don't want to um, kick them out of your game altogether say that if you're going to keep making these kind of characters then I'm just going to keep killing them or you can just tell them just straight up they can't play with you those are a couple of ways to do it there and if somebody comes into the game with the intention that they're going to break the game then and I didn't know about it and then I see it in the middle of the game happening and um, the other people are in the middle of a session, and you got a session going on. I'll be like, I'll be inclined to bend the rules to stop the other person, this power gamer, from destroying the game. But if it's outside of the game, I would most likely just stop playing with them altogether if I found out that that was their intention in the game. <clears throat> but uh, those are all the things that are some of the ways you can, you know, try to stop power gaming. But the real point of this video is to tell you how much better role playing is than power gaming you i got inspiration to make this video from some of anders videos or his youtube handle is woodward i'll leave a link to his channel in the description and um i already made a video on how it's not all about the xp and everything and i'll leave that link in the description also but the uh main thing i like about role playing over power gaming is how much more fun it is I've never really made a power game character because I've, I honestly I've never really played that much so I mean I might have made one back in the day before I really knew what role playing was but I'm sure I definitely have on some of the video games I, I played but um, when it comes to RPG games I haven't made a power gamer character yet like I said I only made a handful and the ones I have made I've had tremendous fun with compared to <clears throat> I have made NPCs and monsters and all that stuff before where they were min max to be strong because um, my party was really strong and everything I wanted to ride the challenge with them that's because I kind of power gaming back when I was just starting as a DM but and that wasn't very fun to do it was, and now I make characters with in-depth personalities and backgrounds and backstories and all that stuff as a DM, and that's a lot more fun than making min-maxed monsters. And it's the same. I imagine it'd be a lot the same way with player characters. I have a two or three active characters right now that I'm just sitting there that I play with off and on whenever um, my GM feels like playing a game. They're um, they're not even fully fleshed out, honestly. I haven't even had them a massive depth to them as much as I would want to put into a character, except one of them's like really in-depth character, but the other two are like, you know, they. I'm not saying I put down a bunch of numbers or dots on a sheet of paper and then it was over. I spent a decent amount of time thinking over their personality, especially it goes pretty much in the order. One of them. I spent a long time developing the personality of the other one. I spent a few, like a, maybe like an hour on, a little bit over an hour I thought of his personality and backstory and everything. And then the other one, 
I kind of spent a little less than an hour on, but I was being rushed when I made the other two characters, which is, I would like to think out a character for a long time. I have a couple of characters in my head right now. If somebody asked me to play a game that I could, that are a lot more fleshed out than those other characters that I could hop into a game right now. If somebody said we we're going to play D&D or we were going to play Water Darkness or something, I got a couple of fleshed out characters there. But the point I'm getting to is, it is so much more fun to make a character and say, okay, yeah, this is more than saying, okay, I can't do this because I need five strength. I need, you know, it's like, oh, well, my dog just busted in to my room, so just don't mind the noises you may hear in the background, but just don't do things like, okay, I want five strength. That means that I'm going to have to sacrifice this role playing stat here or this role playing stat there. You know, I wanted my character to be smart, but no, I want, if he doesn't have five strength, he's not going to do enough damage. Don't do that. That's stupid, and that's annoying as heck, and it's just, you know, just get out of here with that. What you do need to do, though, is say, okay, if you want to make a buff, bodybuilder, wrestler type character, go for the five strength. I mean, in World of Darkness, five strength is ridiculously high, and you should have a really, really good reason to have that you're among the strongest person in the world, especially if you're a human, but that's... That was just an example. Like, if you want to make a massive buff bodybuilder guy, then go ahead and do that. But don't make him because you want him to be good at combat. Make him because you know you want to play a wrestler or something like that. Or um, make him... Or if you want to make a scientist or a scholar or a professor or what have you, don't make him so that you can have pass all knowledge checks and know everything about the world and know everything's weaknesses and everything make it because you want to play an intellectual type trust me it will be so much more fun if you just play a character that you know you want to play rather than one that's designed to beat beat the game there is no winning or losing a role playing game well there is actually winning is when you role play losing is when you power gain. And this has been Dungeon Master Bloba signing off. Any video description, um, any video suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. If you like this, leave a like and subscribe. Um, if you didn't like it, feel free to leave a dislike and leave a comment why, and I'll try to improve future videos. Thank you guys for watching. This is Dungeon Master Bloba signing off.